welcome everyone to Aging in Action. And we're very happy to have with us a husband and wife dynamic duo. And uh, full disclosure, they hold me together in a lot of different ways. As, uh, <laughs> we've got Kristen Green with us and Adam Ball. And Kristen is a physiotherapist and Adam is my chiropractor. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you. you. Yeah, and I, I was excited to have you on because, like I say, you do hold me together with a long list of other people. And uh, as we age, we start to have little kind of issues. And uh, both of you uh, have different perspectives you're taking things from. But uh, you, your, your company is known as the Sudbury School of Fitness. And you were just mentioning it's kind of the umbrella for real life health and also your CrossFit gym. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. CrossFit Sudbury um, and real life health with real life health being our kind of clinical services and then CrossFit Sudbury being the gym, although there does end up being a lot of overlap. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Well, I know, like I see you on a regular basis, uh, Adam, every month. And then when I have a special uh, situation, where, like when I, at Christmas, when I couldn't walk, I come to see Kristen and she puts me back together again with uh, acupuncture and ultrasound. And, and, and so you both have two health disciplines. Uh, maybe explain a little bit about uh, what you do. Oh, <laughs> um, I, told him I, I told Adam I was going to try not to speak over top of him too much. <laughs> um, husband, wife, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So as, as a physiotherapist, uh, physiotherapists um, are specialists in um, being able to prescribe exercise, um, getting people moving. Our, our main goal is uh, to keep people active. Um, to get them back to whatever their um, activities were prior to injury, if they've had an injury or if they haven't, um, to get them participating in something or um, becoming active and also preventing um, uh, injuries as well uh, through um, exercise and various modalities um, in manual therapy, um, manipulation, um, acupuncture, um, and electrotherapy. Um, but our main focus and um, one of the things that I just love is exercise therapy um, and, and getting people active in the clinic and and making sure they stay active and accountable um, to, to doing their exercises um, so that they can use it in everyday life and get back to function. That's my... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So with <laughs> chiropractic and physio, there's a lot of overlap as far as scope goes, but I kind of like echo a lot of the same things where my goal is generally to help improve people's function um, by also adjusting their structure. Um, but that's often not enough to just provide people with a functional pain-free body. They need to actually use it. Um, and so that was part of the reason why originally I had started the gym and, uh, why it's been such a good asset for us as practitioners to help people build a hedge, uh, against their, their injuries and whatever. So they're not just functional for them they're functional for everyone compared to you know like in the general public they're going to be in like the top one percent and it was uh it was really um awesome to have be able to have uh, a full facility here a full fitness facility because we can see people in their uh as they're exerting themselves and as they're getting tired what happens to their movement patterns um do they break down because a lot of times people come in and say oh um i get you know calf pain when i'm running but it only starts around the 10k mark well i can't just get them to run down the hall and back it's not going to do anything so i can see them you know if they're doing things in the gym or they're running on the treadmill or whatever it is. I'm like, okay, hey, go do that for, you know, 30 minutes. 
and then we'll check it out because we can have a better idea. And then also I can make, ensure that they are doing the things that uh, <laughs> we've asked them to do by seeing, seeing them in the gym. So it was really great to bring um, together our vision of taking people from that sickness to wellness, to fitness paradigm um, so that they can, um, if they're as, fit or um, as healthy as they can be, and then they get injured or they get sick, then they just fall back slightly along that spectrum um, and then can move back forward. When I was reading some of the uh, information you shared, sorry, Gwen. No, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, I did notice there was a, a lot of statistics about as we're getting older, you know, that muscle mass, the, uh, the change in our body formation and, and, you know, the, the, our, obviously as we get into our fifties, the energy levels itself is, you know, coming down a little bit. Um, so can you explain a little bit more about how, when we're aging, how that process kind of comes to light? Like, how does that build in? I think over time, as we age, we tend to prioritize other things like paying bills and developing Working. our careers mm -hmm. um, taking care of children or yeah. Uh, yeah. other loved ones <laughs> versus when you watch a child playing like how frequently do they run as hard as they can possibly run from one activity to the next and like when was the last time you ran as hard as you could like for every me. day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got the blue running shoes <laughs> every day <laughs> but you're doing a great job um, but yeah I understand what you're saying uh, yeah and, and over that time as we don't challenge our bodies as much as we used to um we slowly typically yeah. lose muscle mass um, is, and that, yeah, is, there a, is there a point an age where we need to really start thinking about that staying well and strong as we're getting into the 50s 60s 70s 80s like I think we, a lot of us take it for granted Yeah, right? that our, our health when we're in our twenties, thirties and forties, and then all of a sudden, oh, those creeks are peaking, coming in kind of thing. It's, it's, you know, I don't think there's any particular age. Um, it's, it's a lifelong progression of, um, we should always be trying to strive, um, to be a little bit better, uh, better than yesterday. Um, you know, and, and that we're, we're always um, trying to improve ourselves. Um, and so I wouldn't necessarily say that there's an age, um, but there are things that we do want to be mindful of as we get older um, in terms of like how we exercise um, because we do start to lose muscle mass um, physiology. Like it's something called sarcopenia and where we start to, our muscles do get smaller. Um, I think it starts around one, um, you lose one to 5%. And I have a stat somewhere or after the age of 30, um, we start to use, wow. use our muscle mass. That's okay. scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, it, and you know, it, it we could, if we're not keeping up with it, right. If we're not exercising yeah. and keeping up with resistance and, uh, training and things like that, or it doesn't even have to be in a gym, right. It can be, um, outside of gyms. Um, and then also, um, osteopenia, the loss of bone mass as well. And that, uh, rate is three to 5%, uh, annually after the age of, uh, 60. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, that's, um, sorry. That's after 25 to 30 years of age, we start wow. our bone density. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so, um, Cause we peak at around that 25, 30, and then oh. we start to decline and more so after 40. Wow. Okay. Wow. So if we were to start exercising, so say, you know, I'm 50, whatever, and I've lost a certain amount of muscle mass. So if I start exercising today is potentially, am I able to get it back or is yeah. it gone? Yeah. Or is it gone? Always, always the possibility <laughs> to heal and to grow. Right. So it's kind of like that saying about the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the second best time is today. Uh -huh. Oh, I like uh, that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Write that down. Write that one down. <laughs> so it's uh, never too late to start. You know, we've never had some late. folks start at the gym at what? 70? 70. Yeah. yeah. 
there. And since then they've improved in, in both muscle mass and, and ability. Strength, power, right? Yeah. All, all those things. And, and as we get older, we want to watch um, because um, as we as we lose that strength, um, and, and power, um, sometimes goes our balance and our coordination, um, as well. So that, and that puts us at a higher risk for falls. Um, and so, you know, keeping in mind that, um, we want to, uh, we want to improve those strengths. We can also improve our balance and our coordination, um, which transfers into our function in everyday living. Right. Well, and falls can be deadly. For if you fall and you break a hip, um, it's a serious matter, especially when you're an older adult, right? It's, it's not some trivial thing. That's why it is important. Yeah. 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 I know. That's where I, that like resistance training can be as simple as like get down onto the floor and get back up. And then try to do it a different way and then do it without the help of any other implements. And yeah, there's like a whole test where it's like how many uh, contact points with the floor do you need before you can go from sitting to standing? Ooh, some days. <laughs> My entire body. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Functional, functional exercise um, is the best way to go. Um, something that is that you that can be transferred into everyday life, you know, so if it's, um, if we're talking about resistance training in terms of like carrying things, well, how often do we carry things like laundry mm -hmm. baskets, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if, if we if we can't pick if our maximum that we can lift is 10 pounds and our laundry basket weighs 15 pounds, you know, then that, that can be an issue because you can't, you know, you, you probably would have to prioritize and uh, break up the tasks um, a lot more um, to be able to get them done. Um, and there's ways to definitely do it, but um, you know, it's, it's to see how, how functional um, the, the exercises that you're doing can be. So like a lot of times people will think, uh, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and squat and deadlift and all these things. And that sounds very uh, intimidating, um, but it's things we do every day. We stand up off of a chair, right? Mm -hmm. Or sit onto a toilet and get back up. Um, and can we do that without a grab bar? Or um, we're picking things up off the floor. And um, can we do that without a reach stick or the called the golfer's pickup <laughs> and like, and like yeah. back behind you. Right. Um, so yeah. things like that, that that's a deadlift um, and, or even putting something up onto a shelf, right. Can I, can I lift mm -hmm. my arm over my head and, and put something onto a top shelf? So, um, so just making sure that the exercises are, are functional is, um, is important. Well, I often, and I've probably said it to you before, but I think about my dad, I mean, he passed away at 98, but, uh, he had a really hard time putting his hands up high and and partly, I mean, he, he worked as a production miner, so very, very hard physical work. And, but I think of, of his generation, the thought of maybe going to a chiropractor or a physiotherapist was never even entered their mind, but it would have helped, you know. So do you find people are more receptive to using healthcare professionals like yourselves to kind of, you know, ward off some of those issues. Because I, I think if he'd seen either one of you, uh, maybe that wouldn't have been the outcome towards mm -hmm. the end, I don't know. Well, I think, I think seeing a healthcare practitioner just gives you a little um, peace of mind to know that what you're doing, you can do safely. Um, so they do an assessment um, to ensure if you have any underlying conditions or any past injuries, um, they can assess that and then give you the appropriate progressions to move you forward. Um, so like, I think, I think if someone is struggling to get active um, or they're not sure how to get started, um, seeing a, a healthcare prof professional is a great way um, that they can at least get the ball rolling and get themselves on the right track. Yeah. I, had, I had recently, um, I don't know if it's a myth, where with so many of us individuals now working from home, it's a different environment. A lot of us don't wear footwear. We, you know, the barefoot in the summer, you know, you're going to your desk, your office, your kitchen table, wherever it may be, your homeschooling kids, you're not wearing any footwear. You're 
winter months, slippers, maybe socks. Jana and I was reading, yeah, and I was reading in an article uh, about six months ago that we should be wearing footwear, even running shoes. So I started wearing running shoes in the home about eight months ago, just to see. And I noticed a big difference. So is it true that we should be even wearing footwear just for our posture, our overall health, flexibility, muscle mass? Is that is there an actual fact to support that? <laughs> I don't know. I think you, you might get some more information from like a chiropodist or podiatrist about that type of thing, but you should be able to walk pain-free barefoot. Mm-hmm. But I imagine the, because that would be, those would be hours that you would have shoes on. So the transition to, to going from wearing shoes eight hours a day, and whenever you walk the yeah. hall, whatever it is to, to being barefoot all the time is similar to like the transition to, I know some folks when they, when winter transitions to spring and folks start wearing flip-flops again, sometimes mm-hmm. show up with like some plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yep. Um, same thing with when they transition to even like, um, folks who transition to new boots, like new steel toe boots that they haven't had before they can experience a sort of a transitional issue. Um, and so it's, uh, it's your foot adapting to change very likely, um, which it should be able to, mm-hmm. um, yeah. But, I guess it would be the same that animas work as sitting, right? If you're sitting at a desk all day or your, your kids are homeschooling or your family, you're, you're not getting up walking to your vehicle as much. You're not getting out to do stairs, things of those nature. So I think it would fall into trying to support your body the best way possible, you know, standing at your desk instead of sitting all day long, right? Yeah, posture and alignment um, has been huge and um, and at home like ergonomics. Yeah. Uh, so being able to uh, correctly set up your desk at home um, has been something that we've seen a lot in the clinic, um, especially due to like neck pain, headaches, um, arm pain and tingling like carpal tunnel type of stuff um, with, with the transition from at home work it's, there's a lot. And like, I never actually thought about the shoe one. Um, but that would be definitely something else. Yeah. Then you go to leave your home for the first time in six weeks or something, you go to put on shoes, like, how do I do this again? Right. Um, but, but those are things I noticed a big transition from being, leaving my home every day to go to work versus now being at home. And those are some of the things. And that's one of the reasons I started running constantly was I wasn't getting that physical activity. I wasn't no longer doing stairs. I wasn't getting in and out of my vehicle. Like you think of all those little components of day-to-day activities that you don't do as much day-to-day when you get out of one room and go to another room (laughs) to work. (laughs) It's true. Even doing your hair, (laughs) like all those little pieces, right? They're muscles you're using. Don't laugh at me, Gwen. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hey, (laughs) what can I say? (laughs) But I I do remember years ago where I, I did work at sit and work at a desk uh, for hours on end, I developed, uh, you know, my lower back pain for sure. And I thought I was going to always have to have raised flower beds because of this lower back pain. But when my job changed and I was getting in and out and moving about more, that pain went away. So Mm -hmm. I think of all the people that end up, you know, with serious back issues and a lot of it is from sitting. Yeah. Yeah. Exercise is medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah, I have a question for you, Adam. Um, so you have um, the gym, and I know we've been going through COVID, and now everything's been opening and closing and opening. So, were you able to? Um, are there programs out there where people are because people are working from home in that right now? Do you have virtual uh, classes for your fitness? Uh, like mm-hmm. Such a thing. Yeah, we did for a large majority of the pandemic thus far. Um, and now at this point, we, we had like uh, live classes, which worked well for some folks. And so that was nice to see folks uh, continue to stay fit while they're at home. Um, and now we also provide a um, kind of like an at home. It walks you through the workout through an app. So it'll tell you what you're doing today. 
it explains the goal of what we're trying to achieve. And then uh, we'll walk you through, um, you can do a live, well, I guess it's a recording, but follow along with the video, or you can look at the explanations, figure out what it all means. So that way there's nothing that you're like, oh, I don't know what that movement is. So, you know, you may end up doing it wrong or doing it uh, or just skipping all together because of not feeling confident about it. There's uh, explanatory videos that help explain everything and uh, provide people with what they need to be able to get stuff done at home when they can't make it in. Mm. But uh, luckily we've been able to reopen, I think for a month or so now. And um, I mean, for majority of our members at least, and the folks we've been working with are happy to have somewhere to go physically again. Um, some to just get out of the house and some because that accountability you get with the community helps. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's such a, a um, important part of, of aging is, is keeping in as good a condition as you can and the muscle mass and, and uh, it affects so much of your health and, and uh, your organs, every, every part of your body is affected by that, isn't it? Yeah. And, and a big piece is the mental health part too. Right. Um, and that's why I like, um, getting together, like being able to find activities that, um, you can do with like-minded individuals that, um, share same interests or want to do the same activities, um, as you is, is super important because at the end of the day, um, there's a saying that I, I like to say in the clinic, but the best exercise is the one we'll do. And if it's not fun <laughs> and we don't right. enjoy it, um, then we're not going to do it anyways. So yeah. Yeah. then what's the point? We can have all these programs and all, uh, all these exercises written up by myself or online or whatever, mm -hmm. if we're not doing them, then it's not a good exercise for you. So it's yeah. finding something that's fun and that, um, and I think sometimes it's like the community side of things and, and uh, or even if it's online, it's like having little challenges online with a friend or, um, you know, doing something where, where you're having to um, interact with some other people. Um, it just, it helps to motivate a little mm -hmm. bit more. And I think as we age also, it's harder to get outside and exercise, right? Having a safe space that they can go to or we can go to in a, a community environment is really encouraging. And then you also have that support stream, right? Someone to, like you say, to do it and, and help you get there on those last minutes or whatever it might be. I, think, I can't do one more rep. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, having that moral support, I think is important too. So it's yeah. nice to see that, you know, you, you're back and open for business and having that participation within the community. Thanks. And, yeah, we're, in, we're enjoying it. We're having lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. And, and where are you located for all of our uh, listeners to know? We're at 95 Pacific Avenue. Um, we're unit four. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in case anybody does it all <laughs> yeah, yeah just off lord street by uh by the large tim hortons and yeah. the bird and that type of stuff yeah, yeah. so you got to bypass tim hortons to get you <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't stop at go keep going yeah. <laughs> um, we're coming around to the, the last minute of today's taping and it's been really enjoying having you both here and sharing some of the best practices is there anything else you would like to share before we end today's taping um, I think it's, I think it's important, um, to, for getting into exercises to, um, to just take a step. Um, and it's, it just could be one little thing that you do, um, that gets you to that next step. Um, and it doesn't have to be a large amount, like a little bit of activity goes a long way. Um, and it's just starting with something, um, is better than nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Seth, uh, Seth Godin, the author, has a rule for himself that he'll do one push-up every night before bed. And so that's how he gauges success. Because he says if he's had a great day and he gets down for his one push-up, he thinks, well, I feel pretty good. Maybe I'll do 10, 20. <laughs> but if he's had a crappy day, then he might say, well, one is good enough and I'm still successful. <laughs> so it's kind of like that. I did that. 
I think I'm going to try that. (laughs) Well, thank you both for joining us today. If anything we've learned is we're never too old to start. Um, So we definitely will have to. And we thank you for participating and sharing these practices. Thank you everyone for joining us today on Aging in Action. And we look forward to more Aging in Action in the future. Thank you, everyone.